yeah, it's Guy. Yeah, I mean, Tally's roaming's been great. Tally's team fighting's been excellent. He's a veteran presence, a big voice on this team, I'm sure. But he's got quite the opponent today in Shia, and especially if Peanut is on form once again. So let's see what the draft brings us. That's a sight for Soul Rise. Oriana, get her out of there. It's okay. going to be the first ban for Legacy. Great first ban there. I thought LGD was going to really put a prioritization on that one. And both teams are just targeting their mid laners, recognizing how important this Ooh. matchup is going to be. Okay, I think plan. we've... We've identified the same thing that Legacy has, which is that the mid lane matchup is going to be absolutely crucial. Orn is another pick that obviously has been risen in priority, and it's one that goes really well with what LGD is trying to do, which is putting Peanut on these carry junglers in the Kindred. Not even going to allow them to have it banned away. He had so many games of it in the previous series. Let's see if he can actually play these mages better, or he'll he'll just prioritize the Graves or Lee Sin. Very curious what this final LGD ban is. It's Lucian. Wow, going to respect that out of Talia and I guess maybe Raze or Topoon as well. Uh, Talia has had one play of the Lucian so far this world. Didn't look great on it, but uh, certainly can play it as Nidalee is going to be the first pick here for Babbit, presumably. And that was kind of what I was going to point out, you know, with so few junglers touched here uh, with Babbit and Peanut being a pretty important matchup in the early game between these two teams. Curious to see what Peanut wants to select here. Does he take something like the Lilia? Does he take the Graves? Because I think whatever the jungle matchup is, it's going to be pretty aggressive between the two junglers. But LGD can wait to pick it. They'll go with an extremely strong start to this draft. Renekton and Twisted Fate. Yeah, already picking on the sidelines. It's going to be tough for Tapoon to deal with this if ZA is unlocked, which we can assume will happen. As Tally, we don't know what mid laners he's got to be able to actually punish this champion. You want control mages. You want to be able to keep Twisted Fate pushed in and maybe pair him with some ganks from the Nidalee. At the very least, the Nidalee won't have the Renekton to have these really strong topside combinations, but you still have other kinds of champions. Tally's gonna go with the Galio. They'll try to match that global with his own. I like it. You know, he needs to get out of the lane, needs to roam, needs to have effectiveness in skirmishes and team fights. This is the pick that he looked excellent on, uh, despite getting pushed around in lane a little bit, but uh, Shie may punish him even more than he's potentially expecting. We'll see what the form looks like from LGD's mid laner as the games go on. And I like this. Bit of a difference here for Topoon. He can play tanks, he can play carries. Gonna get Gangplank here in this draft. Interesting pick there. I mean, you're gonna have a fine time against the Renekton. You can obviously orange out of the Twisted Fate cards, but you don't know what the backline of LGD is thus far. And ideally, you wanna be able to use that Gangplank ultimate on top of some immobile carries, zone them out from a team fight, and you already have a really good way of just splitting the enemy's composition and gaining advantages in the team fight that way. But now that you have a Nidalee with a Gangplank and a Galia, you can assume that Legacy Esports wants to play the early game fairly controlled Control, wait for that level six and then pop off. I mean, if nothing else, uh, an extra global might not hurt if she is going to be teleporting around the map as Caitlyn's going to be banned here in phase two. It's been all topside picks here for both of these teams, so I imagine we'll see a number of bottom lane focus bans here on either side. Very curious to see how Kramer and Arrays kind of shake out as well. These are, uh, I guess I'll call them late game insurance policies for these teams. Very good team fighters. Arrays has had an excellent tournament, but Kramer kind of creeping up in power alongside the rest of LGD as Rakan is going to be taken away from Mark. I think Jin would be so good here for Legacy's composition. Being able to combo a root from a Gangplank ultimate to keep somebody in that center is really devastating as well as pairing quite well with the Nidalee. It actually allows you to keep a distance from what LGD's composition wants to do and they're targeting away this hard engage. Mark had some really insane fights against Rainbow 7. They don't want to see any of that again. Rakan has been rising in priority so much during the planes. I think this is a pick that we can just expect to continue to rise in priority for all the teams moving forward. The ability to engage and peel at the same time is just unparalleled and they combo super well with some of these that we have yet to see in this series or from these two teams, which has been the Twitch. Yep, Twitch uh, certainly a pick we'll also be keeping our eyes on if either of these teams do want to pick that one up. But Ezreal going to be banned on the Legacy side, so respecting the power of the pick, despite Ray's looking very good on that champion. Kramer also perfectly good Ezreal, so keeping that one out of his hands as Leona's going to get picked up here. They're counter picking AD here. Ooh, very interesting, yeah. The counter pick and AD. I mean, we've already seen what some teams feel comfortable doing. We saw yesterday super massive bust out a vein as a counter pick, if you will. Didn't really work out, but we know that there's quite a bit that you can do from the AD department now that Caitlyn is dropping priority and is banned entirely. It's going to be a Kalista instead. Wow, Kalista Tarek. It's been such a long time since we've seen this combo. 
Twitch is gonna be an insane team fighter and late game insurance, but also there's just, there's just too many. We're just gonna. Yep. <laughs> Curious to see the Leona picked where it was, because typically Leona would block Rakan, but Rakan was already banned, so you don't have to worry about that. But there might be something different coming here for the LGD bottom lane if they're gonna pick Leona where they did. We'll wait for the clock to count down. It's not Swain, it's gonna be MF there for Kramer. Just pure team fighting from LGD and then you've got a Twisted Fate that's gonna be able to roam and help you in the laning phase already. So I think that the teams have gotten everything that they've wanted and it's now I'm about to see if they can actually enforce those win conditions and those areas that we thought would be problematic for both the team fighting in LGD and the early laning from LGC. Yep, I think the obvious places who are already going to look at we'll continue to look at after seeing this draft. Babip versus Peanut is going to be a lot, but who can get the early foothold in the jungle 1v1? And uh, of course, Shia versus Tally is going to be the matchup probably throughout the whole series because I think it's where the biggest skill discrepancy lies. So Tally's going to have to do a very good job to keep track of Shia's Twisted Fate, which as soon as Twisted Fate get, gets loose, game devolves very quickly if that global presence can be felt as often as Twisted Fate wants it to be. So coaches are going to fist bump and we'll play game one, or at least stop game one very shortly here. Best of five between these two teams. You said already, Crumbs. LDD have played so many best of fives already before this tournament even started. Played one yesterday. Let's see how they look today. It should be their comfort zone. And they've chosen to have a pretty strong mid 2v2 pairing, which is where I think the game is going to be decided right now. You've got Twisted Fate and Graves. Graves is going to feel comfortable to invade and have that global to back him up. But on the flip side, Nidalee and the Galio can also offer quite a deadly combination. The taunt into a spear follow up or just Nidalee pouncing in and allowing Galio's ultimate to have a really nice position can be quite devastating in these fights. So I want to see what the attention towards the mid lane ends up looking like because both these junglers have the opportunity to play very aggressive in the invades which is what we have seen from peanut despite different champions we saw from the analyst desk cage was highlighting how the lilia was being played being very aggressive and in your face and that kind of play style can work very well early because twisted fate will have that shove against the galley early on he needs a few more levels to be able to wave here safely and then assist in those groans i mean peanut's old nickname was the battle ward right he would get so much information and vision just by running into the enemy jungle and fighting whoever was there. I mean, that's aggressive jungle is kind of what Peanut came up in the scene being known for, and he's been very successful on a variety of different teams in the LSK and, of course, now in the LPL. So you could tell why there was a worry that, you know, LGD would kind of power up as the tournament went on, even though they did look not great at play-ins in the early stages, and they are still prone to mistakes. Uh, the individual skill, especially between the star players, is uh, pretty outrageous. So we'll have to see if Legacy are up to the task. But it's a long series for either of these two teams. Their last shot at qualifying for the World's Main Event is here. We'll see what happens here in game number one. Uh, okay, I, I think that LGD is just so focused on making sure that Zia pops off. And that's something that we haven't seen that much Twisted Fate priority in the tournament thus far. It really was a pick that dominated the global meta a few months prior, and then it really fell off. But if you remember how dominant the Twisted Fate can be to the side lanes, you can see how explosive LGD's composition can get. Because when it gets to a point where the Renekton is shoving in the gangplank in the top side and then you've got misfortune to be able to hit that level six and combo with a leona it is really tough for the side laners of legacy to be able to survive if a twisted fate gets online so you need to really prioritize vision around the mid lane as well it's not just a matter about shoving it's about knowing exactly where he is and not giving twisted fate the opportunities to use that port we want to look at that first ultimate as well these global ultimates that want to get ahead are so important in the early game for having that first one really pay dividends or else you're really going to slow yourself down. You know, it's already at it. Moving in, clears out a ward. Does have that sweeper. In fact, both junglers have an early sweeper already. But no invades by the looks of things here as the teams are just spread out across the rift. We'll take a look at Ray's with uh, some pretty aggressive Callista runes, but I wouldn't say nothing out of the ordinary. I do like that both these bottom lanes are a little bit more aggressive than what we've been seeing, right? Kramer on the MF, Ray's here on the Callista. Uh, Mark has Ignite. Isles has the heal instead because Ray's has cleanse. Thanks, Leona. Kind of forcing the tax on that summoner spell there, but 
Uh, there's going to be a little bit more play, I think, in the mid game between these two marks on two bottom lanes. Whereas we've seen you know, a decent amount of Twitch, a lot of apps, a lot of Caitlyn. Picks that want to scale a bit more. I think both teams know that they're expecting to fight a little bit earlier than normal. They have to. This is what is going to be happening when you're playing these early game junglers that can be so aggressive and ranged at the same time. They can really exploit their lanes having priority and you just have to back off and contest because the mid laners can collapse so effectively as well. So we see that the junglers are actually ended up taking very different routes as Graves is going to do red to blue, path all the way back to the top set and just a full clear from Legacy's Bad Baby. So he's going to put a little bit of an extra focus into the bottom lane. I don't think that Peanut will end up pathing to the bottom side for an early gank. There is that cleanse on the Kalista, making her a lot harder to lock down. So you're best off just playing off of mid, who's just continuing to shove the galley under the turret. This is the area that we thought was going to be really important here. And Tally is doing a fine job in farming, but he's already losing some HP. Yeah, TA so yeah, took stack deck level one, played very aggressive up on the wave as Peanut is going to take a trip down the bottom lane, but mid lane, here's Bavip. Tally already with a taunt, does get it off, and the spear is not going to cake. Now Shia is going to have to run away, but here's the same story in the bottom lane as Ray is likely forced to flash, does hop over there as Isle's going to have to flash out instead, and Peanut, he took a tower shot. As Bavip's going to go back in, the Q though not going to connect, just barely sails past the minion wave. Both junglers really trying to make their mark this in this early game, but Babu does not have the red buff, so he's not going to be able to fight Pina unless he lands a really good spear. His gank in the mid lane just didn't find the right angle for it to connect. He would have been able to force a flash out of the Twisted Fate had that been a bottom little eye. bit more patient here. Looking for one bottom spear. Frame, oh, we got hit! What are you doing? That shoot's going to prop, but there's the stun landing on it. Into the smoke screen goes for Bip, so no first blood. But everyone's going to walk away as Kramer had to burn both summoners there. He should have known that the Nidalee was in that side of the map. After all, Grace just dodged the spear that came from that same angle. So the fact that the Misfortune lost all summoners is a big lapse in judgment there. Now we're back to Nidalee having priority here. And is going to be able to double crab the Graves if she passes to the top side right away. And looks like she's just hunting him down, trying to make sure that she knows where he's at. Sees that the camp is already taken. Can deduce that the Graves is going all the way to the top. Crap. Should have the info, you can see the LGD ping on Babip's location as well. Know that he's likely around that area, and they would be correct in that deduction. Ooh, Long Sheng smacking that barrel down to stop Poon. Was getting some, uh, some good leverage early here on the gank plank, but oh goodness, Renekton doing Renekton things. Conqueror gonna proc into Poon. A little unhealthy after that trade. Oh, here comes Peanut. Can he hit the smoke? If they stop his recall, he's so dead. Yeah, Ooh, flash, nice smoke flash. screen. Now Poon's gonna have to call for help, but I don't think help's coming. First blood just sitting right here under the tower. So Boone gonna do what he can to try and survive. Gonna get stunned, gonna get uh, orange up, and now he's gonna flash out of the wave, and it's first blood peanut LGD on the scoreboard. A good attempt there, but we saw what Longjin was trying to do, trying to whittle down the gangplank because he knew that Graves was playing to the top side. This is what LPL teams are pretty darn good at, which is playing your lanes to where the jungler is having and that's exactly what happens you can be that aggressive because you know you have backup worst things happen your jungler is there so you take a 2v2 and you have a health advantage so you can be playing that far up the clutch move there was peanut stopping the recall knowing that there was no way out for gp yeah now Topoon actually going to move in and try and find peanut we'll see him on the krug camp there or at least see the camp being finished off so it does have the info renekton though did walk back to top lane uh, sheen finished up for Topoon as the cs has evened up somewhat but uh, early tab eyes here for the Renekton means that Longxing should feel very comfortable here and uh, going to be tough perhaps to contest for this first break given that they won't have TP, although Coughlin will have an ulti most likely if they do go for it. And back down to the bottom side, it's good news here for Raisin Isles. They're up about 10 CS already. Uh-oh. Okay, Pacer, we start to see what can happen here to the Gangplank because this wave is going to be fat. It's going to be building. Longjin has oh, to stop this so wave rude. from being cleared so that the Twisted Fate can hit level 6 at the same time Renekton is 6, and then you just tower dive the Gangplank who has no summoners. Let's see what Peanut does in response to this because it is a really big possibility to obliterate this Gangplank. Renekton is already level 6, but they're just looking for the bottom side and will let Tapoon live another day. Yeah, good pop priority there for Legacy. Does give them a pretty early first Drake as the Infernal Dragon goes down. Topoon, I think, yeah, he's broken that freeze. Hongxing just trying to let the wave push as late as it can. He walked up a W to Barrel, by the way. Like, that's how... That's how forward Renekton is willing to play in this lane as Topoon is trying to play catch-up on CS. The, the Gangplank's always going to have 
a lot more gold just from his passive. So if he's a little bit behind, you can actually you can see him being relatively even in gold just from that ability. So he can't afford to fall behind. He has to prioritize the health knowing he's up against the global. And right now, the junglers don't know where they're at. They haven't seen the graves just yet, and the red buffs is spawning. So they can assume that Peanut might be in the top side at the moment. So Legacy has no problem looking for a gank here because Peanut doesn't have flash. As it's done there, and that's moving down to the bottom side. Kramer, no flash, no hope. But Vips in there is going to get the first kill. As Mark going to try and stun it off. That damage is massive, but just barely not enough to finish off the second. And look at where they go for the gank. They know that the wave is pushing, so that LGD is going to overextend a little bit to try to prioritize pushing that. Now, Leg LGD will go for the blue buff, knowing that the Nidalee is not there. But there might be a bit too late to pull the trigger on the dive to the top side. The Galio now has the ability to roam quite easily. Doesn't have TP, but his ultimate will be in range of assisting Tapoon, who already has the ultimate to diminish any threat of a dive on his lane. Yeah, blue buff to Peanut. Hits level 6 already, but let's watch this again. I think Tally actually fake taking the blue, by the way. He went over to the left side, and Isles just lined this up perfectly. Great use of the Fog of War there, too. They didn't know that the Herrick stun was coming from that direction there. And they just wanted to hit those three minions and maybe walk out. So right at the time that it was going to be possible for a gank, because the Flash is about to come up for the Misfortune as well. So that opportunity was not there. And you already see that Babip has learned from the first gank into the mid lane. Position yourself to land this spear before the crowd control hits. Both supports are in mid lane. I think they want to play for the Herald, perhaps. Because Babip also on the top side of the map. He's going to lane gank through. Oh, it's not really a gank, actually. Taboon's not here. But Bip's big goes a little wide, but he's just going to defend the tower from the Renekton. He's looking pretty spooky here in the top lane. Yeah, he's spooky because the Twisted Fate is also positioning to the top side as well as the Leona. So they're quite worried that they could just gank the Nidalee there. They're trying to catch up in CS. And it'll always help out these farming junglers to catch up on what the laners are missing out, allowing you to get ahead. But just the Leona Roman misfortune as well is going to give over a nice and easy Herald MF. Gotta remember, one of her best traits is her strut. Her ability to rotate across the map is really unparalleled. And so she's gonna be able to rotate over to the top side and stick to this lane with the Herald, or just base and go back to the bottom side whenever she wants. Nobody runs faster than her. Yep, like I see, deciding to opt out of this potential Herald fight. Race is pushing the bottom lane, but Topoon is in trouble once again. This could be five people in his lane ASAP. Mark with the flash E does land, but the oranges are gonna be burnt now. Peanut gonna put him in the smoke screen, and Topoon just getting chased down all day. Peanut looking for another kill. There's the collateral damage. Gonna take down the gangplank. He's got his completed warrior enchantment at the moment, so he's really strong. Gonna do so much damage, and they're still gonna get that first brick because they popped the herald over here. So it's just gonna be gold over to raise here. But the race for first brick has already been won by LGD. This was the concern for Legacy. How is the laning phase gonna play out? Clearly, LGD is gonna be able to outclass them, but this is a pace that I don't think LGC was ready for for Bay Street, already down over 2,000 gold, losing that first turret, and every lane, with the exception of bottom, has just been getting relentlessly shoved in. Oh, Harold, not gonna get cancelled either, so it does good damage to the tier two tower as well. I mean, yeah, one of the lanes is going not so great right now. Tapoon down almost 30 CS to Long Xing, but it's not the lane I think we expected. Tally's actually done a pretty good job just kind of floating this lane and keeping track of Xie, not letting him get out of this lane. And bottom lane's done really well on the legacy side, but Tapoon, even though Gangplank does print a little bit of extra money, gonna have to do a lot to hold on to this Renekton that's getting so strong so quickly that they build water cutlass already racing towards the blade of the Ruined King. And I think the other issue is just Peanut, right? He's just brazenly walking into the enemy jungle. He knows he has priority from his solo lanes, playing exactly the way that he's known for. Just relentless aggression, because he knows he can afford to take every fight with his team behind him. And he knows that his mid laner's ultimate is going to be a lot easier to play around than the Galio ultimate. Already in the tournament, we've seen what Galio can do when he's paired with champions like Camille or potentially the Jarvan. Here, there's really not a lot to work with on the side of Galio. You have Nidalee that has to go in, but it's not like she's stronger than Graves and has an opportunity to go in whenever she wants. So there's a hard time for finding Tally an opportunity for him to influence the map and instead he's just losing plates and losing gold and just being bleeding pressure non-stop with GA is able to collapse on everything and that's what makes it so hard for Legacy to try to make a play knowing that they're already behind when it comes to the mid lane rotation and that the mid laner of Twisted Fate is going to have a much better position around the fight than the Galio can. Yeah. 
quick drake take as well ogd just too much pressure in these lanes for legacy to try and answer it and they're already up 2000 gold rlgd as it is going to be a cloud rift and a cloud soul for this particular game but boop to his credit farming really well but here's a 1v4 dive tally gonna get out but there's the first start there's the second flash out of there sp and that firing shots into the galio but they'll take the mid tower instead Good ulti there, actually going to clear the way for Tapoon as Tally finishes off the rest of it, but he's busy like making sure Renekton doesn't kill him. So it's just a brief repeat from this wave. And that's another Gangplank ultimate just used to deter a tower dive. The first one was used when the Gangplank was chased down by Leona and Graves, and now the second one to defend the mid lane. These team fight tools that Legacy wants to use continue to be used to just survive laning. Their one hope here, Pastry, is going to be Race, who's been farming quietly, yet a Kalista tends to have a really hard time in the mid game if she doesn't roll into it with a really big advantage. The rest of the team has to really round around her and they do have the Tarek ultimate if a team fight breaks out where LGD really over commits to fight but so many times we've seen the difficulties of using that kind of ultimate is so hard and boy this lane is so rough for Tapoon here I think that moving forward into the next series into the next game you want to see more tanks into the top lane picks like Shen picks like Malphite just something that makes it so much harder for you to tower dive these lanes Oh, blue buff onto the bip, I believe. Yep, did smite it away, but Peanut is just at it again. He's got two pushing solo lanes. No fear as he walks into the enemy jungle. Shiei's almost finished off this mid lane. Out of tower and plates are still up for 50 seconds. Long Sheng's been working on the top outer thanks to the help of Rift Herald, so that one's looking pretty low as well. It's just an all out assault here in the early game from LGD. Legacy uh, trying to play catch up despite. Ray's looking good. 30 CS ahead of Kramer with a finished Blade of the Ruin King already. Not going to do much without a team fight. Oh, this is what we're worried about. Crumbs to Poon. Already used it. Going to get stunned up by GA. And that kill's not there just yet. But Bip, he's trying to fight Peanut as Tally's roamed in. But okay. That's the Ninja Tabbies from the Gangplank, allowing him to survive that. If he didn't have that, he definitely could get one shot there. But again, that's another defensive ultimate, another global use from Legacy. They are completely reactive to what LGD is bringing to the table here. They're not finding their own place. So despite LGD being so aggressive, they are at least keeping Legacy's tools completely used in a defensive manner, which makes it so much harder for them to get these flanks and these team fight wins. They're going to kill this Twisted Fate at the very least. He does have flash. Yeah, he's going to try. No one in the area to help him. There's the gold card out of Shiye, but Biplo can leap back in. There's the TP in, that'll force the flash. And LGD have to burn two summoners, but they do protect their mid laner. Oh boy, okay. I actually think he might not have needed to flash there. The Nidalee is not that strong just yet. Does have Murkress to survive that CC and potentially escape from what would have been the Renekton following through. But we need to see Tarek and Kalista involved. I don't think we've seen a single Fates call just yet. And those are the members that can bring this back for Legacy. They have to continue to survive what LGD is doing, which has been good thus far. They haven't died that much just yet, but you got to make a proactive play on your own. It's good that they have that first dragon to stall out the soul that LGD is going to be fighting for, yet they need to make sure that they have vision to get the plays that they want. If you look at the map right now, there's a single control word on the blue buff. They have no idea what's going on in the river, which makes it so difficult for them to move forward. They have to be grouped together. And now they've lost the crab as well. So even thinking about this dragon setup is so much rougher for them as the Twisted Fate ultimate will come through and they're so late for this era. Yeah, if they even wanted to fight it, right? LGD are going to be first for that objective. They should be able to take it down. Raze is going to be busy finishing off this tower, which I like because Legacy do need the gold. The second Rift Herald is going to be even better than the first one, despite not giving any plates away. There is... Plenty of places that they can try and break this with. And LGD, oh, they take the mid outer as well. They, they're going to be able to use this Herald wherever they want, really. You have so much time to decide where you want to pop this. Now, the bottom lane has really lost a lot of value at the moment. And going down there past the 20 minute mark really gets to be a liability at source. If the enemy team can always react and start Baron for you. So I think that the best use for it moving forward is just going to be when you get a team fight win, you can just pop it in the lane that is closest to you and try to get as much value out of that. Let's see if anything happens top lane. There's a big wave here. It looks like Renekton's just going to farm it up 
and make sure that he can crash this as the priority from LGD right now is around the bottom side and around the dragon. If Legacy can secure mid lane priority, they're going to have an easier time rotating this galley and having his ultimate be a presence. Uh, Renekton doesn't have TP, so Legacy will at least get a full V4, but Peanut's popping the Herald mid, so they're going to have to deal with this first. They're faster to the rotation. Look at where Legacy was. They were so focused on the bottom lane, they're now slow to this. They're going to lose a tier 2, and then LGD can just rotate over to the dragon, and Legacy will have so much terrain to traverse through before even reaching and seeing the objective. Get the Herald down, but as you said, LGD have all this time now to rotate everybody over to the dragon. And that's going to have to be given up, I believe. Legacy can't get in the area to contest for the objective, so they will give the second Drake over to LGD. That gold lead is continuing to grow 4,000 gold up now for LGD. Actually, 3,000 maths is hard. Math is hard, and you know what's also really hard? Pastry drafting, because so many times what you think is going to play out ends up being differently. I think that Legacy thought that the laning phase was going to be a lot easier to get through. That's why you have the Gangplank, you have the Galley, but these are all lanes that are going to lose naturally to what LGD drafted, and the short range of Kalista doesn't actually allow you to combo that well. I think I really would have liked to have seen that Jin, something to pair to the range and add to an engage factor for Legacy. The Kalista, yes, has engaged, you do have to play so well in the early laning phase. I'd like to see them move away from laning emphasis in the next game and really focus on what got them here, which was team fighting, making sure that you actually have every bit of tool of crowd control to pick on the enemy. Legacy can punish LGD because they have quite a few members that can get caught on their own that do like to go on these individual side quests. And if you catch somebody there, you get you chain a few of those picks with the right champions and then you just get those objectives for free because you get 4v5s left, right, and center. Yeah, I think team fighting is still good for a Legacy in this comp, although maybe a bit different from other comps that have shown us. But getting a team fight seems to be the, the hard thing right now. With mid out of steel being up, it's really hard to get into the river and then get vision down. We've seen LGD just have, I mean, basically full control of, you know, their half and part of Legacy's half of the map for the last five to ten minutes. Well, the Terex, Terex won't even get you the, the right team fight, right? He's, he doesn't even have the range to engage onto you. He's melee. They're looking for Peanut here. Stun does oh. not connect. Off for the ulti there for Peanut to get out from under the Terex stun. And bottom out is going to fall as a result. She and Kramer just smacking the tower. Tally not having nearly enough AP to clear that out. So Legacy just going to have to wait between dragons, I think. Tavip is farming up a storm. Like, he's still 20 CS ahead of Peanut, but... Peanut's got two kills. He's working on a Black Cleaver. Habib's working on a Zonia's. So rare for a farmed Nidalee that doesn't actually have uh, an entire team with a solid scoreline behind her to be relevant here. She's just going to be relegated to surviving in these fights with the Zonia's and maybe getting a Grail, but you're not even boosting a hyper carry here. The Kalista hasn't done a whole lot just yet. Doesn't have the Ginsu's if that's what she's going. Probably will just be going for the Hurricane second to try to deal with all the diving members of LGD. Yet, Nidalee, if you're not getting ahead early, you really just end up being a secondary support and you don't have a hyper carry. So LGD is going to have to really just find an incredible Fates Call for these fights. You can actually pair Fates Call with the Terek Ultimate and the Galio to do quite a bit of damage. And it'd be ideal if you could actually land that on top of an ulting Misfortune because nobody else is really going to have the right angle to stop her. Yes, Tally has found plenty of teleport flanks to go for it, but he doesn't have the teleport up just yet. He just swapped to it though. So maybe he does have have the, the vision to see that Kramer has to be stopped from his ultimate channel. I guess we'll find out because we haven't had a full 5v5 yet. Uh, LGD just happy to play the side lane with their big Renekton and their big Twisted Fake. Can't say I blame them. She is going to go ahead and split push the bottom lane. And Longxing has just been permanently pushing. I mean, the top lane is so long. Uh, there's no tier 2 tower there. It's just the inhib tower. So yeah, Renekton's going to get spotted, but he's just going to pressure things in. He's got the TP. For the minute 25 mark on the Dragon Realms in, LGD have completely taken over Legacy's jungle. And Tapoon's in a potential 1v4. At least a 1v3 here as Mark's just off to the side, and Babip's gonna have to come down to try and help out. Oh, it's brutal. They, they don't have a way to engage. They just don't have it. The Nidalee doesn't find it. You don't even have the vision because 
LGD is doing such a fine job in denying it. You only have that one ward in the back of the red brush, but because of the terrain, you still don't even have the right angle there. So only Tally can potentially use that here. Yet they're still just bleeding turrets left and right, and LGD can always disengage quite effectively there. You can use Leona ultimates and gold cards to get away from what LGC Legacy's throwing at you. These are going to be a confusing series, Pastry. LGC, LGD, but anyways. Legacy needs to have a better setup for these team fights. You need to engage. You can't just bleed out the entire game. Yeah, and it's tough again with how much control LGD have exerted across the map, how good their setup and the vision is being with, was lacking in the early stages of the tournament in their plane. Legacy, they're finally going to posture aggressively. Good dash out from Peanut, but Legacy want to fight for this dragon because you call it crumbs, race is gone Ginsu's. Legacy are really committing to this 5v5, the first one of this game. They do have the inside track already onto the objective, but they're gonna have to make it quick. Solar Flare hits Raze, cleanses out. There's Tally going in, finds the taunt there. Stun lands in as well, but Legacy needs to commit a little bit more. Tally gonna flash out. Collateral damage over the top, Longxing getting poked a little bit by the gangplank as the ulti gets committed, and Legacy will start the dragon. They still have Tarek ultimate. This could be the fight for Legacy. If Tally can TP and find a really good flank, this could be it, though. Misfortune still has ultimate. Yeah, full of Renekton, though. They're gonna spot him now, finally, but I think it's too late. Race gonna get stunned from so far away as Longxing gonna take down the Callista. A second kill already as the bot lane for Legacy has fallen, and Babip's gonna have to run out of there. The dragon will be forfeit, two kills given over as well, as LGD only getting stronger and stronger. This sneaky crocodile finds Callista, and her clans had been burned earlier from the Leona, so it was so easy to delete her. They can now turn to the Baron. They get everything, Pacer. I think this game is all but done here. Legacy just got outclassed early from LGD, and they have been clean. They just don't get the fights. They just focus on objectives and don't give the opportunity opportunity for Legacy to get the fight that they want. Yeah, it's looking so much more clinical now, RLGD. Certainly scary as this team looks towards the main event of Worlds 2020, but still a long way from that one here, but certainly this game looking very good for LGD as they finish off the Baron. I think Legacy can shake this one off though, but first we're gonna look at this flank though. Great control ward there from Lang Jin, and then Kalista steps up, so easy to immediately delete her, no heal to save her a little bit longer to buy time for the Terrak ultimate, but it wouldn't have even mattered. She would have gone down at the end. Doesn't have enough damage to burn through the LGD diving pair of Leona and Renekton. Just a nice easy setup there. It's always nice Renekton can just walk his way into the back line. Legacy not able to find that 5v5 that's just been looking for. Every fight has been unfair. And LGD are going to look to keep it that way with the Baron buff pushing down. Only inhibitor towers to take alongside the Nexus ones. There are no tier twos left. They were already very effectively 4 one slash 1-3-1-ing with this Twist of Fate and Renekton. And now it's going to get even better with this Baron. So LGD just want to buy their time and allow the Renekton to crash the wave into the bottom. They want to pressure three lanes at the same time. You want to have all three drawing the attention out of Legacy so that you can maximize what you're doing with that empowered minion wave. So now that the Renekton is crashing, you can see what LGD is trying to do with mid and top, and that's going to draw away the members of Legacy, divide and conquer a composition that's already having such a hard time team fighting, an even worse time laning. This is just going to put an even bigger deficit on them. All right, well, Longxing gonna go ahead, push down this. Waves are crashing it around the same time. Very well coordinated there. As Tally looks for the taunt, but not gonna be found onto the Renekton. Kramer also getting aggressive. Trying to hit down the tower, but it's not really an angle for Legacy to look for here. I mean, every single inhibitor tower is currently being pressured. That was a good rotation there out of Peanut. I'm really impressed that they've actually been able to crash these waves so consistently. They're getting some value out of the Lich Bane and RFC as well. And there it is, Divide and Conquer. You see that Tarek and Kalista were in the bottom side. Well, surprise, the Misfortune was able to rotate to the top side. You just broken one of these turrets down. And when you start to open up the base and you're dealing with a Twisted Fate, you can never leave. The threat of a backdoor becomes all too real here. So this is a big milestone for LGD in closing out this game. The noose is tightening. Certainly is, and still 30 seconds left on this Baron, so another wave at least is going to crash in. She is going to go ahead and finish off this inhibitor. The cannon is going to do it. And mid lane, oh, Race was actually the target. That cleanse not good enough as the bullet time comes in. She is almost flanking all the way around the back of the mid inhibitor tower. 
that Legacy just kind of getting crawled into their own base now. Babip going to get blasted by Peanuts ulti. They're going to go on for GA now, but the exhaust is good. Still the damage is there. Going to rip the spears out, but it's not enough to take him down. Fates call in. Ultimate pop for Tarek, but GA into stasis. He goes. Surely they can get one kill. Indeed, they will as Raze will finally pick off the pesky GA. And on they go again. Raze looking for the long shing. Going to try and keep the kills going. Renekton getting low, but he's pretty tanky. Mark here as well. Tally with a three-man taunt. And they're still going. Mark surely is going to die. Indeed, Raze will get a second kill. But a slim consolation prize at the end of that push. LGD did so much damage with that Baron. Yeah, they finally get the fight that they wanted, but at a huge cost there because now the entire base turrets are gone. Only your Nexus turrets are alive. You've lost double inhibitors and the Baron, yes, it went down, but it was so much value from LGD. You still have the teleport available from the Twisted Fate. And once he's up, once he can start to pour it in, you can even pair it with the Renekton's TP to backdoor here. So we're going to look at GA overstepping there. Getting a little bit too greedy, could have potentially retreated to the top side, but you can almost never fault somebody for wanting to group up with the rest of his team, knowing that you have safety in numbers. And look at how they had to start this fight. Raze did all of the initiation work. We've seen players like uh, Tactical in the LCS having pop-up performances on the Kalista there, but knowing that your best engage as a Kalista happens at the 25 minute mark doesn't really strike you as the optimal way of playing Kalista here. They're gonna lose up this Ocean Soul, sorry, Cloud Soul, which is gonna be really deadly for somebody like the Leona or even the Renekton that can just pop ultimate and immediately find the engage. They're looking for more fights and they're Ooh. gonna catch great. Peanut stun raise, this is an easy kill. See you later, Peanut! Spears, oh, he's not in range. That's a heartbreaker. Ayla's now gonna get stunned up, and Mark, he's found just that. Race is gonna get stunned up, but Tally gonna look to save the day. Mark now made a pink cushion. Ashier will finally take down Tally, but Legacy, Whoa. they're gonna keep fighting here. Race, he needs to stay alive, but it's not gonna be all that easy. Already killed by the Renekton, and it's gonna be absolutely falling to pieces here for the Oceanic lads. As LGD look to put the finishing touches on this game, that's quite the TP. <laughs> Very, they really uh, want him. Aggressive from Shea, we'll call it. Perhaps disrespectful. RFC gonna proc in. See you later, Babe. And that's gonna be the ace for LGD. That's gonna be game one for LGD as they'll finish off the first Nexus on their way to the world's main event. Quite collected of a game. You only had 12 kills in 29 minutes there, but it never felt like LGD was in danger of losing that. We knew what their game plan was gonna be from the start. These lane advantages easily translated into these team fight wins. And I think that the recollection from what you get from these games for both teams is pretty straightforward. LGD will try to get the same draft and give us a repeat of that one, whereas Legacy will have to break this apart. I love the Orianna and the Syndra focus there, but you can't overlook the Twisted Fate. It's a really important pick for a lot of teams here at Worlds, and it often tends to be a bit of a clutch. You do need a lot of games to be able to play around Twisted Fate, and if you can ban that out, it 